All right, so we're working at the shop today and it's time for another restoration blog, or as I call it, a video log, which would be a vlog on this 1969 Subaru 360 Sambar van. Uh, it's not mine, it's a customer's. And I just wanted to document it for him and for everyone else out there who's interested in taking on a project like this. Uh, I've had this van. It's been in queue for, seems like a couple years. Might not be that long, maybe a year and a half. It's pretty rough. Uh, I've been through some of the rust issues on the body. He's gonna take care of that. I'm more concerned with the engine and trying to itemize what I've got. As projects come to me, they come in all types of stages. This one I'd say is on the lower end of the scale. It's just been sitting for so long and so many parts are rusted and so many parts were just kind of strewn about in the van that it's hard to inventory what I've got. I mean, take for example this generator. Whoever pulled the engine just left the wires attached, um, but I don't think that's usable. Could be, but it's pretty rusted. We've got some new tires. We've got to sandblast the wheels. As you can tell, these tires are not in that great of shape. Um, but we're moving on to the engine. And that's what I've got over here. Um, I've dedicated a cart to it now to keep myself organized. I've taken all the small bits and parts that were floating around inside the van and I've bagged them, organized them, mentally preparing them for restoration. A lot of the engine tins are here. They're pretty rusted. This one is the air intake from the body of the van to the fan and it's really rusted and that's unfortunate because that's a really hard part to find. And what's also unfortunate is the engine. The engine was sitting in the back of the van. I got it out and I immediately soaked it with oil by filling the spark plug holes full of diesel because she is seized and seized tight. And we're gonna try to unstick it and use my gantry crane, which is what this chain is hooked up to. It's that contraption there on the beam to load it onto this cart so we can start taking it apart and figuring out what we have. I do not have high hopes for this engine. It just looks so salty. All the damage here on this, the fan here, the corrosion, and it just doesn't move. I can move the fan a little bit because it's got a rubber hub, uh, but the crankshaft, which is right here, is not moving. So we're gonna do a couple of tests. I think I'm gonna put my, my gun on it on a, a low impact, see if I can rattle the crank loose a little bit like I said, it's been soaking in oil for 18 months, I believe now, and that's, it's time. It's time to see what we got. This is a van motor. You can tell because it's got a fuel pump, a mechanical fuel pump right here. It's actually not mechanical. It works off of crankcase pressure. Whenever there's a compression on the lower part of the cylinder, it moves the diaphragm and there's no mechanical linkage, there's no camshaft, so that's it's just a, a, a pressure pump. But all vans have a, uh, a fuel pump on them where sedans don't, as well as vans have a Hitachi distributor and all the cars are Nip and Denso, so the cap and rotor are different. But like I said, this thing is just locked up tight. Let me get my tools ready and we'll see if we can just gently try to rattle the crank loose. I don't think it's gonna happen, but let me get set up for that and we'll give her a shot. All right, so what I'm attempting to do here with my six point socket, which is made for impact and my gun at 175 PSI, I just wanna gently try to rotate the crankshaft bolt back and forth. Uh, if I loosen it to the left, the, the nut will just come off and the fan can be pulled off. So I. I gotta go clockwise, but I gotta be careful. I don't wanna break the end of the crank. So we're gonna just try and just see if anything happens. I don't think anything's gonna happen here. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Now I didn't really torque on it. Like I said, I don't wanna strip the bolt, strip the end of the crank, that would be bad. If the crank is savable, it's, it's valuable. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lift it up on the cart, pop the heads, and we may have to start drilling pistons to get this thing unstuck. And away she goes. Yep. 
You don't want her to spin too much. That should be good. Let's get the cart underneath. And I'll set her down gently. Just like that. Love this little crane. I don't use it very much, but uh, came with my shop. It's kind of homemade thing. The guy that was here before said that he lifted engines out of cars with it. I don't know if I'd trust it to do that, but the Subaru 360 engine is only about 350 pounds and uh, it works just great. Let's get her unhooked and let's get the heads off and see what we've got. Oh, little Subaru, you're gonna be so beautiful someday. All right, last bolt. Let's see what we got here. Oops. Of course, that one went under the bench. I am expecting a mess. Oh, of oh, transmission fluid. Actually, not too bad. There's no hole in the piston. But she is rusty. That one actually is not so rusty in there. Wow, I hope the crank is not. These have roller bearing crankshafts, and I wonder if the salt air has gotten in. Oh, you can see that port's open. Well, we're going to keep working on this thing, see if we can get her unstuck. Might be tapping on those pistons here in a second. Okay, I've been tapping on the pistons a little bit. You got to be careful. The cylinders are cast iron and the pistons are cast aluminum. You know which is stronger. So if you tap real hard, you can bust a hole in the piston. Now we're going to replace these pistons uh, with oversized Wisco forged pistons, which I believe are also aluminum. Maybe they're steel. I'm not sure if you can forge aluminum. They must be steel with coated skirts and lightweight piston rings, the whole bit. Uh, but I just want to tap on here a little bit. She's stuck. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the carburetor off, which will allow us a visual to the piston ports, basically the skirts of the piston. Same thing with the exhaust. We can get in there and squirt some oil in there and then loosen up the barrels to see if we can get any oil to go past the tops of the pistons. It looks like just the oil that I've had sitting in here has never got, has never weeped past the piston to lubricate the stuck rings. And that's because there is a, a dissimilar metal. In other words, cast aluminum will attract itself to cast iron over time, especially if there's salt in the air. So that's next. Let's pull this thing down and see if we can get her unstuck. I really, really hope the crank is good. If not, uh, the customer will not be happy. Okay, so we're working on this stuck seized and somewhat unused Subaru 360 motor. We got the bolt off the end of the crank here and unfortunately the threads, some of the threads came with it. I think I can save that, but uh, it was just so rusted on there. Where'd it go? I don't know, the nuts are on here someplace, but the threads need a little repair there. And then I got the carburetor off and the exhaust off the back. And I can look up in the cylinders there. Get my light shine just right. You can kind of see, they actually don't look too bad. I've got the cylinders loose, like on this side, and that's helping me persuade those pistons to release their grip. <sighs> what you want to do is you want to save gaskets. So in other words, see how the intake gasket here is on the left cylinder is stuck onto the cylinder, and the right cylinder is stuck onto the intake manifold. All these gaskets are really hard to find, and a lot of them are reusable. So the cylinder base gaskets, you want to try to save those. Those are thin paper gaskets. They can be printed out, new ones, but you want to save everything. These intake gaskets are really hard to find. So what you do is you take a razor blade, like so, and just come in behind it. I can do this one-handed. And you kind of just cut to break the seal. Same thing with the head get. Wait a minute. 
there's a head gasket on this side. That's this. This thing had two head gaskets on the on the left side, the fan side piston. That is crazy. Who would have? Yep, there's a gasket there. You want to save these. <laughs> and now I've got an extra one because this is the head that came off that side. And there's a gasket right there. There's three gaskets. So yeah, funny stuff you find. Um, but anyhow, you want to save as much stuff. This is priceless, rare stuff. Now I've been beating on this piston that's up the furthest and it's pushing the cylinder up, which I don't know what's going on there. This piston here looks to have some damage that uh, was incurred a long time ago. And the way you do that is you take a big punch like this, try to spread out, try to spread out your, um, your damage, I guess. So you don't punch a hole through the piston, try to spread out the, the hammering and you just use a big hammer on there and go to town. So I'm gonna keep hammering away. It's coming slowly. I've got this cylinder raised up and this one is just stuck, stuck, stuck. So I keep using aero croil, which is a really good penetrant and squirting in here, trying to loosen the skirt and the rings. Same thing up here. And then same thing on the backside through the exhaust. You kind of got to go up in there. I'll shine my light up there, up in there. You can see that. It's pretty cruddy. I really hope the crank is good on this thing. So keep your fingers crossed. Okay, so we've been beating on this thing gently for a little while, probably an hour or so. We did find there was two head gaskets on this cylinder and doubled up intake manifold gaskets on this cylinder. Don't know what's up with that. This piston I got to move a little bit. I have it bolted down back on the case. And this one, I've got it raised up a little bit. I think the crank actually may be salvageable, but I'm tired of messing around. So find yourself a press tool like this little puck here. It's like the shape of a ho hockey puck made out of steel. Put it in the top of the piston there. Remember these pistons are expendable. And then get your handy dandy steering wheel puller or gear puller as you might have. And then you can use the head bolts. Take the washers off for a little more perch. And you're gonna screw them on there. And we are tired of messing around. We're gonna press this piston out of, the, out of this rusty old bore. Let me get set up here. All right, let's see what happens here. This could go badly. That thing is tight. Oh my gosh. All right, so it turns out this piston's really stuck. I've re-oiled everything and I had to redo my puck. The center of the press actually punched through my hardened puck. I don't know how that happened, but I just heard a pop. So we're gonna keep going here. I think we might have it. I ended up retorquing my head bolts and we're gonna give her the beans. I've got my safety glasses on and my earmuffs. So I'm safety protected, are you? <laughs> pop, hear the pop? Pop, another pop. Let's squirt her down with coil. It's coming. Man, this one is really, really stuck. I work on this thing for like three hours. gonna break. I think the barrel just cracked.
it's about ready to go. I've been wailing on this thing for a while. Look at the look at the rust on that piston. It was just mechanically seized. So tight. So this is a 750 foot pound torque gun, snap on, with impact and hardened everything, and then my compressor set to 165, and it's having this much trouble. Amazing. Okay, I got it. Finally, it popped off. That thing was really stuck. In fact, the top of the piston's hot for me cranking on it. All my my, my uh, puck devices, which I had lined up like this, are warm. And my compressor's been running for about a half hour. Now we gotta do this one. Okay, so we're all set up on the distributor side cylinder. And I just have a sneaking suspicion this one's going to go a lot easier. Let's give her a whirl. Yeah. We got it. Get all my parts here. Fall it down. Cylinder. Now, this is the moment of truth. We have our pistons. Oh man, they are just so. There's no bend to them at all. The wrist pins are completely seized. This is the moment of truth to see if the crank turns. Yeah, the crank turns. I don't know if it's any good. But I gotta get the pistons off to see. But that's a little promising. Well, that took a lot longer than I thought. That fan side piston was really incredibly stuck. You can see what I went through. I would have used heat, but I'm out of acetylene at the time, or I am currently, and that would have just lit all the oil on fire, which would have made a huge smoky mess. So I decided to go with the press thing. And luckily I didn't break the pistons. Like I said, they're, they're no good. They're gonna be recycled and the new forged pistons installed. And this little Subaru van, is just one step closer to running. I was hoping to have that thing rebuilt today and should take you guys for a test drive. But that ain't going to happen. <laughs> Thanks for checking in. Thanks for looking at all my weird stuff and enjoying my videos. If you like what you see, subscribe or send me a note. That'd be great. We'll see you guys later.